So we are going to start now uh, automatic sprinkler system, right? Module one uh, for fire protection design. And uh, it, I think this module will take complete day uh, today. Uh, I think uh, it will take complete days around uh, 100 slide or 110 slide we have only related to uh, designing of the fire protection system. Uh, we discussed in the beginning, right? We discussed in the beginning regarding uh, all those things uh, in detail for fire protection too. So we are directly moving to the design approach and all those uh, parts where we will uh, mainly focus on design because we have enough uh, knowledge uh, from our previous class. So the first question is that uh, for our designing, if you can see the, the if you can see the image at the screen, it's talking about you know it looks like some. Uh, uh, some a multi multi purpose building uh, at some uh, beach areas right it's a big building involved how many uh, sprinkler system would be required for this building means how many risers we need uh, for for this building as we know that uh, based on we know that based on uh, uh, this light hazard, ordinary hazard, extra hazard, and storage uh, schedule. One sprinkler riser can only protect 52,000 square feet. So, if the the area of the building is more than that, we need different risers, right? Based on the area, we need risers for different section of those building. So, uh, talking about the number of risers we need is totally based on types of hazards and allowance given by NFA. Uh, the maximum limit we have to be within that one. Moving on to the next one, right? It looks like a high rise building, uh, right? There is a multi story buildings and all. Uh, so the question is here we have, right? Can one system riser supply two floors in one building? Maybe three floors or four, uh, four floors? Yes, it can supply. There is no doubt in that. Until the area exceeds the limit we discussed in the previous slide, which is 50, uh, 52,000 square feet for the uh, light hazard occupancy and if you can see for the ordinary hazard occupancies and higher, like for the extra hazard, the area of the uh, protection by a single riser decreasing because there is a concern that in those area, the fire will grow in large size exponentially, right? Soon after the fire, there is tremendous amount of heat, re heat release rate. Those heat will uh, cause more trouble to the area. So the higher the area, the square feet coverage will be reduced further. Again, uh, so like it is a connected building, uh, so the same question apply here also. So is these two buildings required, uh, the two detached building or connected building required uh, uh, different riders? The answer to those is the same, right? We have to be in uh, the limit of the maximum area of protection per riser. We don't have any concerns regarding uh, separate riser for multi-story or big building or detached building. All we have to do, we have to be within the li limit of the maximum area protection provided by NFA 13. Now here we are at uh, unobstructed versus uh, obstructed construction. Right? Normally we are talking about uh, when you are placing your sprinklers, right? We need some uh, some spacing uh, all the four sides, right? In, in the circular areas, there is the umbrella shape, so we don't want anything nearby that which will obstruct the flow of a sprinkler, right? If you place a sprinkler nearby a beam or a column, right, nearby a column, those discharge profile will be affected by those columns. So we, we might not, uh, we might not get, you know, the total umbrella safe, and maybe at some location we are not getting water. It's not going to uh, extinguish the fire. So here we have, right, if the distance between uh, two obstruction is more than 2.3 meters, we consider it uh, unobstructed, right? So 2.3 meters, right, uh, between uh, the sprinklers, like uh, there is no obstruction criteria. But if it is less than 2.3 meters, we consider it obstructed flow, means the profile of the sprinkler will be reduced. And next, uh, half an hour or 45 minutes, or maybe one hour, we are going to discuss 
regarding this only right how to place your sprinklers into the building based on different of sucks and what should be the maximum distance at all we'll discuss that in detail now we have you know clearance to storage of suction right uh, suppose this, this looks like a storage areas and we have a finger at this location so the question is uh, what is the uh, what is the clearance between the deflector and the top of the storage right so it should be at least 18 inch or so for, for this finger like esfr or CMS is, is CMS is being right? only sufficient fast response or control mode a specific application is fingers. We need uh, uh, at 18 inch of the space for effective discharge of water and, and fighting the fire. Moving on to ceiling pockets, right? Uh, normally what is the ceiling pocket in architectural ceiling uh, faders that consist of a bounded area of ceiling located at higher elevation than the attached lower ceiling right so something like uh, this area is you know if you can see this the safes and all we call it the pocket ceilings now the question is if, if those areas required a sprinklers right so there are some uh, some clause in NFPA to deal with the ceiling pocket and all and the other kind of the architectural faders need the sprinklers in those area or not. So we have some uh, clause in eight six seven. The sprinklers shall not be required in ceiling pocket where all of those following are made. Right? So we need to. Uh, we, there are some criteria now. The first one they are talking. The total volume of the unprotected ceiling pocket does not exceed 28 meter cube right so if you can see the figure here the first class area is that the this is a normal ceiling right this is a normal ceiling and this is something like a cloud ceiling, a ceiling pockets so if this volume is around 28.3 cubic meter right we don't need uh, a sprinkler in, in those ceiling pockets and if there are two ceiling pockets the minimum distance between this two ceiling uh, pocket mid should be three meters so we have one ceiling pocket at this location right and another one this one so distance between these two ceiling pockets yeah i'm talking about the sprinklers mr Zabat. So, if the volume is less than 28.3 cubic meter, we don't need this sprinkler uh, at this location, right? But keeping in mind the adjacent ceiling pocket, if there is one another kind of the ceiling pockets, which normally you can find in the architectural feathers, should be at least around three meter away from this one. So in those areas, right, uh, we don't need a ceiling pocket. The top figures talk about, right, uh, if the depth, right, if the depth of uh, from the reflector position is around less than equal to 300 mm, right, if it is less than or equal to 300 mm, we consider it as protected ceiling. So we don't need in, in that area. If you can see, uh, this, those all clouds, the one we discussed here, it is similar to that what we discussed in the figure. 28 cubic meters, right? The depth shall not be more than 900 mm, right? The depth of the ceiling pockets shall not be more than 900 mm. The entire floor under the unprotected ceiling pocket is protected by a sprinkler at the lower ceiling elevation, and the size of the unprotected ceiling in the same compartment shall be, uh, it should be at, at least between 30 meters, uh, right? Be at least, uh, this depth should not be more than 19 meters. So, normally, when you are designing the system, you, you have to uh, coordinate uh, along with those uh, um, the 
the civil department or architectural team to get all those ideas, right? Because when the sprinkler system designed, this is in the initial phase, we have to be careful regarding all the ceiling progress and all. It's like, you know, it's like a broad and uh, broad knowledge into application of the sprinkler system if you are going to accuracy. Now we are moving all the way to installation requirement, right? So, Mr. Ravi, uh, again uh, back to the to the ceiling buckets. Regardless, regardless of uh, the material of the ceiling buckets, right? For example, if it yeah, is regardless a of and, uh, and it is a glass structure or whatever, uh, or even if it is uh, the same yeah. structure, it does not matter, right? Yeah, no, it said that point number five says that the unprotected ceiling pocket has non combustible or limited combustible. Non combustible or limited combustible finishes. If it is totally combustible, the, the 8.6.72 criteria 5 will not be missed. Ah, okay. Okay. So and if we, it, we need. Yeah, yeah yes, carry please. on. Uh, so, so for example if it is a glass a glass for example a skylight yeah then, then it is under this uh, under this part right a glass and skylight i think we have uh, some other section we'll discuss that one yeah uh, if it is that under this part also uh, the same principle applies there also we have to discuss that all also okay you know. But keep in mind, in those, those area, we need quick response sprinklers, right? So if you remember from the previous class, the quick response sprinkler will activate much more faster than the standard one we discussed in the beginning. Sorry, in the previous class. Yeah, which will be a thinner, a thinner glass bulb only. Yeah, yes. Now we're moving all the way to the installation requirement, right? Where we'll discuss regarding different is we discussed regarding a standard and upright, the pen, standard and upright, standard and pendant, sidewall, ESFR, CMSA sprinklers, all those requirements. Uh, we are going to discuss regarding uh, the sprinkler spacing, maximum area of protections, minimum, uh, minimum distance between two sprinklers, right? Distance from the wall, distance uh, of the sprinkler from the wall, the minimum one, the maximum one. One by one, we'll go uh, from this one and discuss, right? So, the one we normally found in our uh, uh, residential office building or anywhere we can see. The maximum area of coverage uh, shall not be more than 20.9 square meters. So, one sprinkler can cover only the maximum is around something like 20.9 square meter, not more than that. The second point talks about the distance from the sprinkler to wall, right? From wall to the sprinkler shall not be more than half of the sprinkler ratings. Suppose if the sprinklers uh, manufacturer uh, rated those sprinkler at something like maximum distance between sprinkler is four meters or four point six. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, now uh, sprinkler now like the smoke detectors and the ceiling different right what what the smoke detector now uh, smoke detector on fba 72 uh, all requirement, yeah. requirement talk about uh, different ceiling every uh, different yeah, yeah. ceiling you have requirements right uh, here yeah the, same right ceiling no here there is a spacing requirement because detector activate based on the smoke and all. So because uh, the requirement some ceiling, because some ceiling here in Saudi Arabia different uh, about uh, USA, for example. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got the point. I got the point. Yes. So. Uh, The first one is 20.9 square meters. Distance from the wall should not be half the. And in a small room, the sprinkler shall be permitted to be located not more than 2.7 meters from any single wall. If the room is very small, right, we can go uh, 2.7 meters from the wall. And 
the minimum spacing of his fingers from a wall right should be at least four inch we have to give a four inch separation from the wall for the finger to make at least some profile right in case of the fire here we have a table right uh, a uh, protection area and and maximum spacing uh, for upright and spray fingers. Now I am coming to question of Muhammad Jabbar, the one he shocked, right? Uh, this is the similar to what we discussed in NFP 72 smoke detector spacing. Yeah, of course. We here also we have the construction types, right? First column talks about the construction types, the second column talks about the system types, and then we have the protection area for sprinklers and the maximum distance between two sprinklers. If you see the first one, right? We have construction types, and they are talking about the non-combustible, unobstructed construction, like a flat, smooth ceiling is unobstructed, right? And it's non-combustible. Based on that, either your system is hydraulically calculated or pipe scheduled, right? So we are mainly focusing on the uh, hydraulic uh, calculation system. We we have most common practice here. So the maximum protection and the maximum is facing between uh, maximum is facing between uh, two sprinklers shall be no shall not be more than four point six meter. Mr. Ravi, what about uh, hydraulically? Uh, there is two uh, two type of uh, of system types. Uh, hydro yeah. hydro hydraulically calculated and by schedule. Which one we should use? We discussed in the in the previous section of that. Pipe schedule is the older method of doing the calculation. We don't have to do any in the software. All what we are doing, we are calculating manually based on the schedule. Now, the limitation of the pipe schedule is only up to uh, up to around. 5,000 square feet. More than that, we cannot use five uh, five schedule meters. And the new building, it is no one is, no one is using. <laughs> so we are focusing mainly on hydraulic calculator system, right? And the pipe schedule means we are not performing the calculation in the software. We are just uh, manually using the, uh, we are just using the table provided by NFPA. And based on that, we are just uh, sizing the pipe and all and doing the friction loss calculation. So no one is accepting, I, I, no one will accept the pipe schedule method at this moment because uh, since the hydraulic calculation software are available in the market, everyone is going along, along with the hydraulic calculation software. We have to focus on the hydraulic calculation software, right? So the maximum area of protection should be uh, 20.9 square meter in the hydraulic. But if you can see in the uh, pipe schedule method, it's further reduced to 18.6 square meter because you know they are worrying about the exact flow and pressure and the, and the exact flow and pressure at the sphincters because we have not supporting those calculations in the software. Uh, software will give you accurate uh, result, you know. Are you there, right? I am here. Okay, I think someone came nearby you. Uh, yes, my brother. <laughs> okay, okay. Now we we continue to the next one protection area and upright space finger for light hazard. So what was the beginning one? Yeah, the same table continues, right? The same table continues. Now they are talking about the combustible uh, and all those. Stuff. So it's mainly based on you know the type of the ceiling, the combustible quantity and all, and based on all we are. Uh, going to use this table to protect our uh, to locate our sprinkler inside a building or inside the facilities. So we have to uh, before designing a system. 
uh, the other different uh, other team of the project like the the structural team the architectural department or all those civil engineers to get the inputs what kind of the construction they are going to make what is the type of the building right so based on that uh, we have to get input we have to uh, we have to work uh, like you know in a combined way uh, to give the maximum efficiency to our project yeah that is the other things that once we design a system and we give the fire protection contractor if the contractor is not not uh, install the system uh, as for the design but the, during the acceptance test right during the acceptance test during the during the acceptance test you know uh, Mr. Ravi, can you just yeah. repeat again uh, from uh, if the contractor is what? Uh, your voice was not clear from there. Ah, okay. Actually, you know, we designed our finger system based on a set, a set of our... We did our lots of efforts uh, to design the system. But once the installation goes to the contractor, right? So those contractors see at the site, maybe there will be some different scenario than how it was designed. So at that moment, they might not install a sprinkler as for your design. They might, um, they might put your sprinkler something nearby the wall or maybe nearby some obstruction, which will, uh, which will obstruct the flow of the criteria, right? So it's, it's like what we design in the, our design phase. Maybe the contractor might not go up to that level of accuracy if it is, he is not qualified one. If he is qualified and experienced and well experienced, you know this is the idea i was talking about yeah clear but again it is the responsibility right once the system installed during the acceptance test right there might be someone from the consultant side the review consultant who reviewed the plan the company owners the civil defense team right and the contractor all of those their person will come and they will look around if everything has been installed as for the design and all then only they will approve this is how a design installation, acceptance, and approval. We are talking about, you know, um, a standard spray, a upright sprinklers, right? Pendant and upright, a standard spray, pendant and upright sprinklers. In the beginning, we were talking about light hazard occupancies now we're moving on to ordinary hazard occupancies right so for the ordinary talking about construction type any kind of the construction or any kind of the system right either hydraulically calculated or pipe schedule methods the maximum protect protection area is only 20 12.1 square meters and the maximum spacing is still 4.6 meters now the maximum protection area they reduce further to 12.1 all the way from all the way from uh, 20.9 square meter right so the area reduced because of why the area reduced can can you guys give us a sign data the protection area for spring levels yeah because here the the combustion the fire combustion load is is, is higher so yeah exactly exactly to the point thank you now the next table 86221c is talking about upright and pendant sprinklers for extra hazard now the extra hazard is the combustion load it goes further down right it is now 8.4 square meter or maximum 9 and 12.1 square meter based on the hydraulic calculation or pipe schedule meters right so the the the, the point we got from here right is the maximum is facing between the sprinklers and maximum area protection of the sprinkler depend on type of occupancies right construction material Meter, might be hydraulically calculated or pipe schedule meters we have to inco incorporate all those things and keep in mind to uh, install at the site
Now, how to install the Insmigler, right? Those uh, upright sensor spray Insmigler or upright or pendant type. Install those Insmigler inside a building, in a plan and all. Now we have a table, right? Mr. The table Bobby. says that, yeah. You come back to the schedule before. Okay. Now, uh, maximum sp uh, spacing. What does mean uh, maximum spacing between the two sprinklers? Yeah, exactly. Between two sprinklers, the maximum spacing is 4.6. Uh -huh. You give you uh, uh, fit and meter. Yeah, fit is 50. No, meter more here in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Okay. 4.6 oh. meters, so the maximum spacing. Normally, the, the contractor used to keep within 3.5 meters to 3.7 or 4 meters. Safety factor. Oh. What about protection area? Protection area, one swingler, how much area it will protect? I mean, in a circular way, right? If you draw an umbrella shape around the, uh, the swingler, it will give you the protection area per swingler. Right? If you install one swingler at the same time, how much area it will cover? This is what about like, the protection uh, area. Like one room or like yeah. all the room. Yeah, one is singular right? How much area it will cover? If the if your suppose your room is uh, if you are okay, the fancy is clear. So clear. okay. We'll discuss that one in detail in uh, under the design density approach, maybe after one hour. So this table is you know, generally talk about uh, what should be the distance and the depth of a sprinkler from the obstruction. In the left, we have a table, right? In the right, we have a uh, image, right? The schematic view. If you can see, you see this one. This is the ceiling levels, right? And this is with some column or maybe some beam, something like that. And it's a solid construction, right? Uh, it will obstruct the flow of the sprinkler. If this is our, this is the sprinkler, right? This is our sprinkler. This is our sprinkler installed. And a sprinkler installed above, uh, around B, distance B from the bottom of the obstruction. So if you can see, In the table, they are talking uh, the distance A and distance B. Normally, they are talking. They are talking that right, if the dis distance from a finger to side of obstruction. So, what is the distance between this one to this one? If it is less than one feet, right? If it is less than uh, one feet, so maximum allowable distance of deflector above bottom of obstruction is zero feet. What they are talking exactly? If distance A shall be placed only at this location, uh, something like at the bo bottom of the obstruction, we cannot go inside above those obstruction. This is how they calculated. And And again, if you are going further higher, uh, the higher values they said, let, let's go some higher values here. If the distance of A from the obstruction is around, the last one I'm talking, if the obstruction A is around seven feet from, uh, from this one, uh, it can go up to around 35 pins inside. Means 35 pins inside the depth we can put our speaker. So what is the idea behind this? You know, uh, I'll just explain that one. If your sprinkler is at this location, right? And it is located nearby this obstruction, right? If it is located by this sprinkler discharge, the umbrella profile will not perf uh, uh, form. It will, it will strike with those obstruction and this charge will be destroyed. It will be not effective to fighting the fire. If it is very close, uh, to the obstruction and the depth is higher. If if the distance A is going higher, let's say if you now A is at this location, right? 
and it is discharging water it is not getting affected due to the obstruction so we have to be and the distance uh, of the sprinkler from the obstruction based on that this table we have to utilize you guys getting a point uh, anyone Ahmed, Anas, Jabar. Yeah, it, it seems to be clear. So, yes. so it's just a matter of uh, identifying uh, the distance first between uh, between the ob uh, the obstruction and the sprinkler head, the horizontal uh, distance. Yeah. And from there, we can identify yeah. the maximum all allowable uh, vertical uh, distance. Yeah, exactly. This is the what I, this is what this table is trying to explain. Yeah, clear. Now there is one at, at the bottom. The rule is the same, right? Uh, now we have obstruction at the corner. So if this is our seeing sprinklers, we are talking about what is the depth of the sprinkler from there and what should be the distance. Here. So the bottom line, you have to be very careful regarding the obstruction and all. Right. If if you if your building is totally smooth ceiling, right, it's like your office area. Uh, there is no, no obstruction at all, so it's okay. But we have to be careful regarding those obstruction. Uh, mainly after the installation, we have to look for the acceptance testing. There is a lots of problem will be coming after the uh, installation because you know we design everything in our office based on the plan and all. But at the site, things change uh, totally because of those other kind of the. In a fan, the uh, the diffusers, s back units, and all those inlets, maybe shift the sprinklers location. So we have to be careful during the acceptance test. Um, Sarabi, this ob uh, obstruction, uh, it's uh, under the sprinkler or beside the sprinkler? It is. Uh, it is depend. It is uh, downside the sprinklers. Downside. Yeah. So, uh, so for example, the higher the depth of the, if the sprinkler, is at the, yeah, please carry on. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, Ahmed, uh, you are saying something. Yes, I am asking uh, because uh, I went to a grocery and I see the sprinkler system, uh, the space between the the goods and the sprinkler system is uh, uh, is short. Yeah. So this is what uh, are we talking about here? The maximum distance between the now, sprinkler. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about uh, the deflector and the uh, distance between deflector to the storage. I'm talking about solid uh, solid obstruction like column, beam, piping, and all based on that one. Yes, sir. of course, we need some space from the sprinkler to the bottom of the surface to make a profile umbrella like shape, you know, uh, the correct way. The one you were talking in the grocery shop is like the distance between the and the other way, right? Yes. It should be at least uh, something around 18 inch. It should be at least around something 18 inch to make uh, things go easier. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the moment if sprinkler discharges, it will it will hit the the it will hit the uh, the storage and it will not make a profile. So maybe it will not control the fire and the fire will grow. Mm -hmm. But here, uh, here, Mr. Rabi, uh, we are not uh, talking about, for example, uh, air conditioning ducts or uh, cable trays or whatever, right? No, we are not. We are not discussing about that one. But those air conditioning and the cable tray or the duct is a kind of obstruction. Those things are also under the obstruction only, right? If there is a duct yeah. passing, we have yeah, to worry. We have to be careful regarding the depth of the duct. Right? It is not part of this table. No, it is not. No, this table only talk about the obstruction. Those obstruction can be. Solid material that is obstructing. So, despite of any kind of those arrangement, we are mainly talking about the obstruction. 
Okay, okay, okay. Now there might be uh, now there might be some uh, you maybe emphasize this point here because you know uh, normally locating of the smoke detector and the heat detector we have to be careful regarding the the distance of the detector from the the AC unit or from the heaters right so so that it will not give a false alarm or false activators maybe your question in regard uh, to those detection system but here we don't uh, talking about any specific kind of uh, diffusers and all we are talking about just obstruction which can be anything. Yeah, yeah, clear now. Uh, so, for example, for, for, because usually uh, what we can find in, in those exposed ceiling where all the ducts and, uh, and cable trays and all the cabling will be just exposed to uh, uh, in the ceiling. And uh, there, there will be also the sprinkler system installed. So if the sprinkler system is high, yeah. uh, higher than the ducts and all these, then some obstruction will be yeah. there. Also. We have to make, yeah, if you are going outside this values, uh, the table and all, there may be some obstruction. Yeah, uh, especially if that, for example, so, sometime uh, the AC ducts, for example, uh, it will not be continuing yeah. all the way of, of, the, of the structure or whatever. So sometime only, uh, uh, the vertical the vertical ducts which is coming downside and then uh, the diffuser of the of the air so it is ba partially yeah, exactly. uh, obstructing the the umbrella of of the sprinkler uh, head but uh, but how how it can be considered here regard to your question for this table right? we have to only for the diffuser of the duct you have to see the distance A from the duct and the depth B from the duct, bottom of the duct. Based on that, only we have to see. You know, there might be some obstruction, but if we are uh, if we are at some location from that one, uh, we can avoid that one. You know, there is obstruction. Just if it is around uh, only one feet from the any obstruction, it must uh, in one side it will must you know strike those wall right those solid materials. But NFPA, how they uh, put this tabulation, right? Based on the the performance in the lab and all, uh, that what should be the 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 minimum uh, minimum discharge from the sprinkler system in the umbrella if uh, enough to fight fire in a uh, in a built environment. So it might be even in those if if you can look at this table, right? If you can see the distances uh, around from the obstructions, it will definitely strike those areas. But again. In the buildings, we cannot avoid those one, right? Those kind of the those kind of the obstruction are always present. So it's the responsibility of the designer who, uh, who have to design in such a way that all the building is covered, even after the obstruction also, and there is no area which is uh, which is remaining in case of the fire. I hope uh, you got the point. Yeah, yeah, I get the point, and uh, I think it will be also clear in the uh, in the coming in the coming uh, explanation. Right, Mr. Mr. Rabi, uh, regarding this uh, pictures, uh, the reference point here, uh, what is it? What is the reference here? Which reference point? Uh, <clears throat> here, here we have in the picture uh, A and B. B start from where? Yeah. From the BS, BS start from the bottom of the obstruction, right? So suppose there is a duct, right? Take a take a, a take a measuring device and measure the distance from the bottom of the duct all the way to the bottom of the reflector. So what is the distance? It will be the distance B. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And there is the distance from the obstruction. Mm -hmm. So if the higher the, the higher the depth, the higher the depth which is B. Uh, we need the far distance. Uh, we need to locate this finger at some higher, uh, some uh, far distance from the obstruction. The lower the depth of the finger from the bottom of the obstruction, but close to this obstruction. So we just avoid the, the sprinkler from the, the and the maximum We, uh, yeah, we avoid, avoid the, the sprinkler, sprinkler from, from the, the obstruction. Sprinkler. Or we can lower the sprinkler. Is that okay? Yeah, we 
Yeah, we can lower the sprinkler to avoid the obstruction. No problem. Now this kind of the arrangement, yeah, this kind of sprinkler will find mainly in uh, exposed ceiling, something like in the in the parking areas or the some 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 uh, hypermarket is exposed to the in upright sprinkler case, we might encounter this kind of the problem. Mm -hmm. And this is a similar. Uh, this is a similar scenario, right? This is a similar scenarios. Uh, here we have only a column, right? So the, if the diameter of the column is there, the the length of the column is C, and the width of the column is the D. And here is our sprinklers, right? So here they are talking about distance A and vertical distance B from that one. So there are different scenarios. You know, uh, we have to while designing at the site, we have to be careful regarding that one. And again, you know. No one is going. Uh, very difficult to go accurate to this table, right? Especially is this the it is uh, the idea of the the plan examiner who is going at the site and looking into the sky with their uh, measuring devices and all, and he's pointing everything. In those cases, in the design limit, and of course, the sprinkler system designed you know based on NFPA 13. So we have to be. Uh, very uh, much uh, clear with our requirement. Uh, you know, uh, if uh, you don't, if you are deviating from the design requirement of NFPA 13, maybe sprinkler will not control the fire. You know, this obstruction is only about you know, if if a sprinkler system discharge a break nearby the fire, but due to the obstruction, the water is not coming fully to the fire, and water is continuous to grow. If water grows, in the fire continuing growing, right? So if the fire continues and more sprinkler activated, it means the sprinkler system cannot protect. It's out of control. This is why we have to focus on the obstruction. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, uh, send you two videos, right, which shows about, you know, uh, the sprinkler profile based on the obstruction and the fire growth size and heat release rate from the sprinkler system, uh, from the fire. Uh, two videos I'll share you uh, in the YouTube uh, after this uh, class, and you watch those, how obstruction, uh, how uh, destroying uh, the the effective effectiveness of the sprinkler system. Now moving on to the next one, we have sidewall sprinklers. Right? Until now, we are talking about uh, only upright and pendant sprinklers. Now moving on all the way to the uh, sidewall sprinklers. The maximum proteria shall be 20.9 square meters. Here also the same one. Distance from the sprinkler to wall, right? This will not be more than one half of the allowable distance. In the small rooms, right, uh, it shall be permitted uh, to go up to 2.7 meters from the wall and shall not be located uh, less than four inch from the wall. So we need at least four inch from the wall to um, put this sprinkler deflector. So here we have the maximum protection area, right, for the light hazard occupancy and ordinary hazard occupancy. Uh, Mr. Rob, again, uh, for for the point that uh, uh, all all the previous tables is for, for both uh, the pendant and the upright. Uh, upright, yeah, exactly, yeah. But when when should we uh, consider uh, the upright and when should we uh, consider the pendant uh, type in our design? Normally, I discuss this one in the fire protection too under the sprinkler system, right? So the upright we need normally in case of the exposed ceiling where we have lots of the dark piping of the sprinklers. So upright sprinkler, you know, uh, what is the function of the upright sprinklers? Uh, it will discharge water and a strike at the top of the a strike at the top of the deflector and then it will make an umbrella so in the exposed ceiling uh, where we don't have any a smooth finish we when you have a smooth finishing we need a uh, uh, pendant if we have exposed or there is lots of uh, lots of type of the obstruction we need upright like in parking uh, parking houses or garages or mechanical room the idea is that you know that if you are installing pendant sprinkler in those areas it will not give a perfect uh, water spray profile uh, as compared to the 
operate this window. So in the if you can see in the independent water is directly discharging below the sprinkler at the bottom and then it is making a profile but in the upright water is going at the top of the sprinkler striking at the pendant uh, sorry striking at the deflector and making a spray profile so this is just like regarding in the orientation and the design of the deflector which upright minimizing the obstruction to uh, those uh, exposed ceilings like uh, the duct piping wing and all if you can go in, in in any mall like if you go to the panda or some uh, some malls which is exposed you can see all the sprinklers are the upright so the finished ceiling we need pendant one and the exposed where we have lots of obstruction and all in mechanical room we need the upright sprinkler yeah clear uh, also the type of, the type of the system for example dry or wet system also affect the, uh, our choice uh, no 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 dry weight pre-action dry weight pre-action is only uh, because of the protection requirement not regarding the spacing and all so this one can be applicable to all kind of the system might be for the pre-action might be for the weight or might be for the dry there is no problem in at all uh, with this kind of the sprinklers even for example the pendant the pendant one with the dry system if the uh, if the piping is uh, is charged with water then uh, yeah. it can be drained 100 percent because yeah, someone yeah. will be accumulating inside the sprinkler head uh, between between the small piece of pipe between the branch and uh, and the head itself right yeah this is uh, this is what something uh, must discuss topics which comes under inspection testing and maintenance requirement for the dye system and also it is the responsibility of uh, the designer you know uh, who make the design in such a way that uh, after the discharge must be some uh, a low point ray connection to discharge the water uh, to avoid the lagging of water inside the piping yes there is a problem the one you discussed it is this is lots of problem with the air and waters the dry pipe system for the maintenance system but again we can use either uh, the pendant one also and upright also there is no issue with that keeping in mind to drain the water completely after after the system activation clear clear so sidewall we discussed in the beginning right we need sidewall you can see must a uh, common sidewall is in the in the in the in the in the in the hotels right or where we don't have enough uh, uh, enough construction material normally piping is heavy with the water and also those ceiling has not has as supportive to put our hangers on the top of the ceiling in that area also we can use the uh, sidewall sprinklers sometimes you can see if you are going inside the hotels and there is a corridor and they used to put uh, those sprinkler in the corridor one at one side and another at the other side to cover the building completely now again uh, for the sidewall sprinkler also the same rules apply the distance a and the distance b the depth of the b and the distance of the a from the wall right so we have to uh, go in the same way what we discussed into the beginning tables. While you are designing a system, right, you have to uh, refer the tables and make sure uh, if some kind of the obstruction is there, uh, we have to be careful regarding those placing. Now moving on to the extended coverage, right? Extended coverage upright and pendant is being as for NFP 13 section 8.8. .8. Just wait a moment. I forget to mention, you know, in those sprinklers that minimum distance, uh, right, between sprinklers, minimum distance between sprinklers also uh, affect the sprinkler system uh, control uh, criteria. If your sprinkler system is spaced at so closely, right, 
there is a problem with that what will happen if there is a fire if there is a fire uh, below one sprinkler those sprinkler activated and discharging the water so if your sprinkler is located so closely the water from the activated sprinkler will go to the bulb of the other sprinklers the fire just below that area the water is going on to the bulb and it is cooling cooling those bulbs and causing the maintain the temperature in the normal range which will not allow uh, the activation of the fire what will happen after some time is a uh, only one sprinkler activated and fire is growing right so the smoke along with the heat moving all the way due to the uh, convection and radiations all the way from the fire below the sprinklers to the area where there is no fire right normally when there is a fire there is a heat and the smoke due to the difference in the pressure and temperature the the smoke profile will go somewhere far away from the fire area now it will activate the sprinkler in the area where there is no fire so the area where we have fire the sprinkler system is more not activated as for the design uh, requirement but far away from the fire area those sprinkler system activated this is the reason why nfpa talks about uh, the minimum spacing between the sprinkler also right we said we at least 1.8 meters right for a standard upright uh, spray sprinklers should be at least 1.8 meters between two sprinklers uh, otherwise there might be problem with the uh, the bulb uh, activation we call it skipping or sprinkler skipping right so it means the sprinkler didn't uh, activated nearby the fire and it active But if in some case we cannot minimize that, right? That we cannot, uh, we have to locate below 1.8 meters. We have to put some ba baffles, right? From the baffle from the screen, some screen that one, it will not allow the, the activation of, it will not allow the water going and it's tying the bulb up the another is meters. Okay, this is all about uh, this sprinkler is keeping. Now moving on to the extended coverage, upright and pendant space sprinklers. It is similar to the one we discussed in the beginning one, like upright and uh, pendant sprinklers. Now it have extended coverage, means the coverage of this sprinkler will be much more higher than one we discussed in the, uh, the standard spray sprinklers. Normally, this kind of sprinklers required, you know, it will cover more area compared to the previous one. It will cover more area compared to the previous one. So now the question is that, where to install this kind of sprinklers, right? We need a smooth ceiling where we don't have obstruction at all because this will cover more area compared to the sprinkler discussed in the previous one. If you can refer the table, uh, here we have a uh, protection area for the extended coverage upright and pendant sprinklers, right? If you can see the protection area is around 37 square meters, right? And the maximum spacing is 6.1 meters. So the higher the protection area, the higher the distance between two sprinklers will be possible only in where we have a smooth ceiling. If we have obstruction, right, it will not, uh, it, it will be not good for uh, the sprinkler system. So we need this one in a smooth ceiling or big, big hall where you know, we don't have any kind of the obstruction, we can install that one. So the maximum protection of area it will, it will be around 37 square meters. And the spacing between two sprinklers is 6.1 meter for this sprinklers. Uh, Mr. Rabi, why are we not using the the standard? You know, uh, sometimes, uh, most of the time, you know, not, most of the time, uh, we are using the standard spray sprinkler only, not the extended one. But, you know, in some way, some application, you know, if, if we have a big, large hall area, right, large hall, and there is no obstruction at all in that. So instead of putting lots of sprinkler in those areas or putting the piping and all, we just put a sprinkler which have maximum coverage of sprinklers, right? So suppose the standard spray sprinkler is covering 9.1 square meter. The extended one is covering something around 37 square meter, which is three times or four times than the, the standard one. So we can minimize you know, the number of sprinkler hairs, the piping, the connection and all. Keep in mind if we need only flat smooth ceiling, right? 
it's minimum uh, it this is not uh, you know you cannot find uh, this in more application but if we have advantage of the areas like hall or room where there, where we don't have any kind of the um, let's say obstruction we can install that one so if you if you can see if you can read section 8.8 .8, which talks about using unobstructed construction right so the criteria is unobstructed construction a smooth ceiling with a six like 16.6 percent so we have to be within the smooth ceiling and the slope should be 16.7 percent right and the clearance between the deflector and the top of the structure shall be 18 inch or greater not less than that one Now here also we have a, a, a table for the distance A and B and the obstruction, right? So we have to cover this table for uh, the extended uh, sprinklers also, as, as we discussed in the previous one. And the same rules apply for the sidewall space sprinkler also. You know, uh, we can use uh, sidewall sprinkler also in uh, extended coverage style uh, if we have uh, those uh, uh, those advantages of the room spacing and all and the obstruction and all if our ceiling is on if we have on unobstructed smooth or flat ceiling we can use this one for the light hazard it will protect 37 square meters and for the ordinary hazard it will protect around the same right so only reduces the spacing in the spacing especially in the and the light is 8.5 meter so the question is the same uh, you know we need a smooth flat unobstructed ceiling we have an advantage of that one we have to we might use sprinklers uh, we might use only three or four sprinklers instead of 10 sprinklers so we can use if we have those kind of the arrangement at the side you got the point Ahmad yes very clear okay uh, Mr. Rabi, uh, uh, here yeah. regarding the side, uh, the side wall sprinkler. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, in, in a hallway, uh, like just an example you you just uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, for example, in in a, in a hallway that uh, we, we can, for example, uh, go one one time one sprinkler on the right side, and then in, the next one will be in the left side. Okay. The same spacing will be uh, between sprinkler will be used, right? Yeah, exactly the same spacing. The same the same spacing, uh, but but will be one one from each side. Yeah, one from each side. I'm talk when I talk about the hallway, uh, I'm only talking about the side wall sprinkler. Only you can put, you know, the side wall sprinkler you can put into a single room where you don't have obstruction. Or you can see in some of the hotels we have a one once we have only. A corridor of around let's say the corridor of around 15 meters we can put uh, one sprinkler uh, one uh, uh, one sprinkler at the entrance and one at the center and one after that one so that it will cover the complete room keeping in the mind the profile of the the sidewall sprinkler is the only semicircle not the full circle right if you can see the deflector if you can see this deflector i think i will send you to share you the video also how it mm. works the water will not go on the top. It will only go to the front side only and to the bottom side only. So it's like semicircular pattern where a semicircular pattern will give. So only we can keep some, uh, some of the stairs. If you can see also with this kind of basement and the stairs also, and mostly in the hotels, uh, you can find this kind of the application. No, no, clear, clear. But but in this case for for the spacing, uh, for example, if if we are the, uh, the design, for example, uh, choose to be uh, one at each time on one side. Yeah. So, so uh, double the spacing will be on each side, right? If the maximum spacing is seven point three meters, it's talking about the maximum spacing seven point three meters. For uh, let's say for the light hazard, we have maximum spacing is eight point five meters. So not be, the 8.5 meter is the distance between two sprinklers. So one sprinkler uh, at this location and other will be 8.5 meter from that one. So 
this one will cover a half of this distance and the other sprinkler will cover half of this one you got the idea okay 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 yeah 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 now it's clear okay normally you know if you if you're going to the hotels you know the the hotel room is not so big so if they can uh, based on the the requirement even in my room also uh, they have put in the into my bedroom uh, only uh, one I mean, in my bedroom they have put only one uh, uh, side wall sprinklers and they will if the area of the room is less than 37 square meter they will just use one sprinkler at this one and it will cover the complete room but is if this the distance is more than uh, if you have to, we have to carry out the distance also right so if the distance is more than 8.5 meters we have to put one sprinkler at this side right so we cannot put the side wall sprinkler into large hall areas we can use only in the small rooms or in the hallway or the corridor where we have advantage of using this one better rather than putting at the top right again we are using this one in case we don't have any problem with the ceiling sprinklers right if we have uh, we, if we have getting everything from the ceiling we don't have to install this sprinkler so the the one on the ceiling the the normal one which is the either the the pendant or or the upright will be yeah will be yeah. this choice for uh yeah. for instead of uh the side wall yeah yeah this is a, that is the first choice you can see most common application is that one but in the hotels you know they normally used to put uh the side wall sprinkler based on some benefits of that they don't want to run pipe into the ceiling and, and they want to penetrate those ceiling and also they will just put at the side wall and it will discharge the water into the room and the other advantage is that if the pipe load cannot be bear by the ceiling right if the ceiling is from the gypsum wall or some of the the ready-made material that is not so much uh, mechanical strength having there we cannot install uh, the standard upright sprinkler rather than go with the uh, the side wall where piping is inside the wall and we're just uh, taking the head outside the sprinkler head outside yeah clear but from cost cost point of view uh, it will not uh, differ uh, much no right? it, it, it will be almost same it will be almost same even it will be the cost cheaper than uh, the sometime it will be the cheaper than the upright uh, our pendant this that because you know in upright we have the piping and all the hanger requirement all those stretching might be costly for this also uh -huh. Good. The position of a sprinkler to avoid obstruction for extended coverage, right? See, uh, the distance A, this one we have a distance A, right? This is distance B below the below the, the obstruction, right? And this is the minimum four inch, the guy clear space with no obstruction except as allowed by 8923. So, now in this case the obstruction should be so far uh, much far distance from the sprinkler because when the sprinkler is charged there is only one sprinkler to the room it will it should cover the complete room right if there is some uh, sub obstruction at this location it might not be effective so we have to be careful regarding the obstruction normally uh, in this uh, in the hotel room and all you can find this kind of application Uh, Mr. Rani, yeah, yeah. just just a small a small question regarding the side wall also. Uh, Sometimes it is used, uh, for example, in uh, I remember in one one of the buildings with, with the big glasses, uh, with, like a window glass, uh, not a window uh, actually, just a a glass uh, glass wall. And yeah, I got I got your point. point. I, I I got your point. You were talking about the exposure protection. Now, what is those exposure protection? Is that you know, if there is a building in a side by building, if your building is here and there is a fire in the another building nearby that one, the heat will come from that building and it will try to expose those the nearby building. For that reason, we have uh, outside of the building or maybe from the inside, we have a uh, we have a uh, uh, side wall sprinkler just to discharge water to the the metals uh, the, the glass to keep it in the normal temperature so that the glass will not break or it will not catch the fire this is the idea about that one we call it the exposure protection and in those protection we need a small quantity a small discharge of water compared to the normal one is this the question you are asking 
Yeah, yeah, but uh, exactly the same concept, but in the same building. For example, in some time, the, the the reception area will be very high ceiling, and yeah. a lot of a lot of uh, just glass glass opening uh, from the other floors, the higher floor opening to the reception area. So they they, they install these uh, side wall uh, sprinklers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or the exactly. higher floor. Yeah, yeah. They will use the side wall sprinkler so the water will come from the top and to find the fire. Mostly you can find this one in the uh, some of the mosques, some of the masjid also, uh, the mosques and all. Uh, nearby my masjid also they have used this kind of the arrangement. But but those only for the protection. Uh, so uh, the calculation will be uh, how how exactly it will it will differ. Uh, from the normal uh, sprinkler calculation the design area and all you are talking uh, no you just say the quantity the quantity of water will be less right no that i talk for the exposure protection but i what i got you are talking about uh, the protection of the building with high high open ceiling right so for that the criteria is the same i was uh, i was understanding something like the exposure protection that required less dense, dense water but the one you are talking is just exactly the uh, side wall sprinkler protecting the same building. So the, everything will be the same. All the requirement will be the same for that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, clear. So the last drop is sprinkler. Now, uh, now we are moving on to the uh, sprinklers, which is uh, most common. You can find this this kind of the sprinkler is the storage sprinkler. Uh, we found in the storage house and the warehouses and all, not in the uh, in the. Uh, light hazard occupancies or ordinary hazard occupancies high challenges fire so the k factor should be 11.2 or higher right so we normally select 5.6 k factor for most of the office right in our, our office or the residential complex but in case of the high challenges fire we need this fingers of we need this finger of you know uh, high discharge because you know the heat release rate is so much extent that small quantity of water is not enough to fight the fire in those areas so in those areas we need uh, last drop and the, uh, the ice fingers we can be use this on the wet pipe system dry or pre action system so the main function of the last drop you know it will it is capable of producing uh, large water so the drop of water will be big you know the water drop will be so large compared to the the normal standards right so if your water drop is the the thickness the the diameter of the drop is larger and, and it will extinguish the fire and we have the maximum protection area and the spacing now since since it is a high challenge fire the protection area is reduced to 12.1 square meter or 3.7 uh, uh, meter between two sprinklers Then we have a control mode specific application sprinklers. The concept is the same what we discussed in the beginning. Here we have a control mode specific applications, right? So the protection area is larger. What is the function of this one? You know, if there is a fire just below that one, it will discharge last last droplet of water and this area, right? to fight the fire and control the fire. At the same time, con we call it control mode specific applications. The, the full form of the CMS is, is this control mode specific application, right? So some water droplet just below the sprinkler will be last drop, and this one will be something uh, less than that. These drops will roll the fire at this location. At the same time, the discharge from the sprinkler will Pre-weight these materials, right? They are discharging water to uh, the material which is not having fire, also. So it will cool the surface very easily. This is how the control mode specific application is similar works. And then we have the same requirement from the tables: maximum protection area and maximum spacing. What we discussed in the previous one. Um, Mr. Ravi. Yeah. Uh, just just a small question regarding uh, uh, for the control mode uh, sprinkler. Here, the, this one is is uh, the fusible link type, right? Yeah, this is the fusible link type. 
yeah what is what exactly the difference when we can use the glass bulb type and when we can use uh, this the fusible link type normally uh, the the high discharge uh, normally the high k factor is sprinklers uh, uh, like uh, in the esfr early separation fast response or cmsa where the k factor is 11.2 or higher or where we are uh, using uh, standard spray sprinklers uh, standard spray sprinklers or uh, intermediate or high temperature rating now the question you you, we, you ask where we are using this arrangement and where you can use that one it is based on the requirement of the the manufacturer so we cannot say that where we are using this one and where we are using that one the manufacturer only design either the bulb size or the feasible link of, uh, of the sprinkler. But what I have seen most common application in the warehouse protections where we have a high K factor and large water droplets, and we don't want to fuse the sprinkler easily, means it will fuse uh, at some high temperature, not uh, exactly at 69 degrees Celsius. In those areas, we need uh, this kind of the arrangement, the feasible link sprinklers. You can find this one in the warehouse application, most common yeah but, but uh, from the functional point of view it will be exactly the same right yeah it will be exactly the same it will break at the same temperature uh, it is a solder it is like a material it will melt at some temperature and uh, go out of the the areas because i can uh, sometime in, in our facility for example we, i can see in in some somewhere uh, they are using the fusible link type and mm. somewhere they are using the the glass bulb type let and me check the, each, each okay. one are stick to the to the same original design but uh, and sometime uh, we 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 struggle for example in the spare part uh, spare part uh, and all, right? and all. yeah but, but if it is the same rating the same k factor uh, the same type for example all upright or uh, all uh, pendant it's okay to to just mix uh, the fusible link with with the glass bulb type or or it exactly need to be uh, the same let me check that one in the in the handbook nfb handbook uh, to get those to your point uh, that mm -hmm. where we need exactly which kind of the uh, link for the fusible and uh, i'll i'll get back to you wow. Then we have early separation fast response sprinklers. It is similar to uh, the one. It's like uh, for the high challenge fire in the warehouse and all, we need these sprinklers. And the K factor is should be 11.2 or higher. It is a fast response sprinkler with RTI less than or equal to 50. And it be it will be used on uh, intermediate or high temperature rating. We'll see. Intermediate or high temperature ratings. And used in high challenge fire, I think we discussed in the previous class also regarding the ESFR sprinklers. And we can use only this in the wet pipe system, not in the dry pipe system, because you know uh, this is only suppression fast response sprinklers. So we need to suppress the fire as soon as possible. But in the dry pipe system, the air should go first, and it will delay the the activation of the uh, system to control the fire. Uh, is this similar to uh, quick response uh, sprinkler? Yeah, it is something similar, exactly similar to the uh, quick response uh, sprinkler. Sometimes they say early suppression, fast response. Uh, the fast response only you can see with the ESFR. But all the other places we, we can see the quick response sprinkler. But the timing for those sprinklers is the same, right? It's almost the same. And uh, we can install this sprinkler uh, with the roof of uh, with the slope of below 16.7 percent, right? So two in uh, for the 12 12 unit run, the rise would be only two uh, two two unit. So now we have uh, the minimum distance between two sprinklers will not be uh, less than 2.4 meters not like what we discussed in the the normal sprinkler which is 1.8 meters now we have 2.4 meters because of the water quantity uh, discharge in large quantity this video i'll share you uh, regarding uh, in the youtube
to the WhatsApp group. And then if you can see the protection area and maximum spacing, right? Again, we have the maximum protection area is 9.3 square meter and the distance is 3.7 meters. So now it's depend up to the ceiling. If the ceiling height is up to 9.1 meter, uh, the maximum spacing is 3.7 meters. If the ceiling height is above uh, 9.1 meters, the maximum distance is uh, around 3 meters. I think just uh, let's take a break of uh, 15 minutes. We'll be back at uh, around uh, 5.45 and then we'll go for another uh, one hour.